Howdy everybody. Today's notes is going to be the second part of the biochemistry review that we went over last time. <clears throat> okay, so we are mostly going to be focusing on metabolism. Let me see if I can make this a little bit uh, easier to see. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that I want to kind of clear up is what is metabolism? So a lot of people think metabolism just deals with, you know, whether you can lose weight easily or you gain weight. Um, but metabolism is actually all chemical reactions that happen in your body. And I can't spell. Okay, there we go. That occur in the body so it does not just deal with your weight whether you're thin or not so thin <clears throat> but it's all chemical reactions that happen in your body as molecules are digested and digested simply means broken down or synthesized and synthesized is a fancy way of saying something being made throughout your body. Okay, so that is metabolism. It's very important that you know that it is all chemical reactions. <clears throat> and there's going to be two categories that we focus on as far as uh, metabolic reactions. And the first, or, okay, so there's going to be two categories of reactions. All right, and so the first category is going to be something known as a catabolic reaction. Should be a little bit of a space here. Okay, so the catabolic reaction, and this is... Uh, something broken down for energy or to be excreted. So when you are trying to get rid of something, you're typically going to break it down into smaller pieces. So that's a catabolic reaction. And we're going to draw a little... Um, sort of picture to kind of help remember that. Okay, so here we have some molecule. Okay, so it's made of different <clears throat> elements. And so a catabolic reaction is going to break something down. So we're going to end up with the individual pieces as well as energy. And that energy can be in the form of like ATP, um, also in the form of heat. All right, and category number two. So this is going to be pretty much the opposite, and that is known as an anabolic reaction. And this is when something is going to be made, okay, or synthesized. Okay, and whenever you're building stuff, you're going to actually use um, energy, so using energy and this is going to be for either direct stir uh, storage or use in a cell so you're building something that the cell is going to use or you're build uh, building something that the cell is going to store for later Okay, and so that one is pretty much the opposite. You have individual pieces that 
and you're going to have to put in some energy. Don't forget the energy uh, currency in a cell is going to be ATP. That's pretty much the type of energy that you're going to be using. And so this reaction is in the opposite direction. We're going to be putting something together. Okay, and an example of this, um, kind of going in both directions, is for catabolic, you might start off with something known as glycogen, which is like an energy storage of sugar. And so when you want to access that sugar, you're going to break it down into the individual pieces, which would be glucose. And then, if you're going the other way, you're trying to store it for later, you would have the individual pieces, which would be glucose, and you're putting it together, which is going to take a little bit of energy, and store it for later as glycogen. All right, so now we are going to move to the kind of nitty-gritty of reactions. Okay, so how do these reactions take place? Place or what makes them possible. Okay, if we were just to sit around and wait for things to happen, um, we would be waiting for hundreds if not thousands of years for reactions to happen throughout your body. So we rely on something known as enzymes. So I'll start a new section. And enzymes are very important. They get stuff done. <clears throat> okay, so enzymes are pretty much for 99% of the time, at least for this class, are proteins that are used to speed up chemical reactions in the body. Okay, or let's, you know, metabolism. And how do they do this? They do this by lowering activation energy. Okay, so they decrease the amount of energy that you need for something to happen. Okay, so that's your energy needed. For reaction to take place. It's actually part of this one. Okay, so activation energy is the energy needed for a reaction to take place. So that is the role of an enzyme. Okay, so we're going to dive a little bit more into enzymes. So one thing that you really need to know about enzymes is that they are specific. So enzymes are specific to reactants. Okay, and reactants are basically the stuff they act on. And we'll draw um, a little kind of diagram to help you here in a second. Okay, so the reactant is also known as the substrate. And that's the fancy word that you use when you're talking about enzymes. Okay, and this is going to bind To the enzyme okay so the substrate this binds to the enzyme at a specific location and that location is known as the active site okay so we're going to draw an example okay so for this example we're going to use a sugar that you are probably familiar with and that sugar is lactose. So you have probably heard of people saying they're lactose intolerant, which means um, they have a really hard time drinking regular milk. It affects them, you know, different ways depending on the severity. Okay, so lactose is a sugar. You know that by the OSE. And the enzyme responsible for breaking down the sugar is known as lactase. That's kind of how you know that it's the enzyme. That ending there tells you. 
And lactose is a two ring sugar. So this is lactose here, a very simplified version of it. So if that is my sugar, okay, and we need to break it down, we're gonna have an enzyme that fits this shape. Okay, so our enzyme would probably look something like this. Get a little bigger, but it's okay. So this would be our enzyme. All right, and then the region where the sugar binds, so this area here, that would be our active site. All right, so something um, that you can see here is that the shape of this enzyme is very specific to its substrate, what it's going to act on. Okay, so if we were to show what it looks like when the enzyme and the substrate combine, you would have your enzyme and then it is perfectly attached to the substrate. And so for this specific example, uh, the reaction that would happen would break down that lactose sugar into two, at least two separate pieces. So you would end up with your sugar split up. And remember, there were two types of reactions that we went over. <clears throat> you had your anabolic and catabolic. So this one would be an example of a catabolic reaction. Okay, you started off with one thing and you broke it down into um, multiple pieces. So this would be catabolic reaction. All right, so the last thing for enzymes. Okay, so enzymes are very, very picky in the environment that they are willing to work in. Okay, so remember they are proteins and so they have to have a certain uh, environment for them to be able to work. Okay, so we're going to talk about factors that affect enzymes. Okay, so why is this important? Enzymes work efficiently, or we're going to put enzymes will work under specific environmental conditions, okay, um, if not, okay, so if the environment is different, they can become denatured. This is a very important word right here, denatured, okay. So that's the fancy way of saying that you broke the enzyme. Okay. So you have to be very careful on the environment that that enzyme is in. All right, so there are, we're gonna break it down into two categories for these factors. Okay, the first one is going to be just regular environmental conditions. Or environment. I think I spelled this right. If not, sorry. Okay, environment conditions. Okay, the two that we're going to have here is going to be temperature. Okay, so if you think about um, your body, you pretty much try to keep a temperature of around 98.6. Okay, if you get too cold or too hot, you start having problems. Okay, and this is one of the reasons, because you're changing the temperature that the enzymes in your body are at, and so they can start kind of breaking down, um, and then things, reactions in your body that would keep you alive uh, stop happening. Okay.
okay? Or things start kind of going crazy. That's why it's not good for, you know, for you to have a fever for way too long because you can actually denature your proteins and not just your enzymes, but other proteins throughout your body. Okay, but temperature has a big role. And then the other one is going to be your pH. So how uh, basic or acidic something's in. Okay, so the, the good comparison here or the good example is enzymes that you find in your blood versus enzymes that you find in your stomach. Okay, so your stomach is very, very acidic. So enzymes that you typically have in your stomach will not do well when you take them out of those conditions. Okay, same thing with enzymes that you find in your blood. Your blood is slightly basic. So if you try to put the enzymes from your blood into your stomach and expect them to work, that's probably not going to happen okay? because you would denature or you would break those enzymes. All right, so other things uh, that affect enzymes or how well they work is going to be um, kind of like enzyme concentration. So we're going to talk about the effect or the effect of reaction time or a number of products. Okay, so how long it takes for something to happen or how much stuff you actually may at the end. Okay. Or, well, yeah, I guess it would be a, the effect on reaction time. Okay, so the first thing is going to be enzyme concentration. I'm just going to abbreviate concentration like this. Okay, so if you have lots of enzymes, so you have a high amount of enzymes, the reaction is going to be faster. You have more things working. And now the effect of the substrate or the stuff that you're working on. Okay, so substrate concentration, how much stuff you have. Okay, so if you have a large number of substrate, you're going to have a large number of product. And this could also um, help speed up your reaction a little bit as well. Okay, and we're going to kind of deal with uh, this information here whenever we do the uh, liver juice lab here in a little bit. So that's kind of the gist that you need for enzymes for now. Um, if you have any questions or you need a little bit of help with anything, just let me know.